Hello tarot tube friends. Today we're going to be doing a monthly wrap up for July and August of 2024. I skipped July because nothing really happened in July. I didn't really do too much in July. In July, I did bring in an oracle deck and I did bring in a tarot bag, which we'll talk about. But uh, tarot has kind of taken a back seat to summertime life, um, and I find that that happens with me for the, the length of time I've been doing tarot, which is just a few years, it's happened every summer. And I'm okay with that, like, I have no problems. Um, it's just, you know, it's brighter, longer, so you're outside, you're doing things, you're, it's just, it's, summer isn't necessarily a tarot vibe for me. It is when it comes to certain decks. Um, I typically use the Light Sears this time of year, but even now, I, I think I've used it a couple times. Um, that's it. I haven't really been using it. The one deck I have been using is the Sistine Tarot, and that is the tarot bag that I bought. It's this little rose number. It's made an appearance in a couple videos at least, one for sure, that I can think of. It has this flap part that comes up. So I got that on Etsy. Um, it's been working out well. I think I like it. It's the only one I have like this, so, and I think it fits the aesthetic of the Sistine Tarot, so I did get that. The Sistine Tarot has been taking over my life. It's the deck I've been using for all of July and all of August. I did kind of rein in my tarot practice a little bit. Typically, I just pick whatever deck I feel like picking. Um, and I made the decision to pick a couple of decks to focus on for each month. And the Sistine Tarot has just been so great for me that it's the one I've been using for July and August. And I've forced myself to put it away so that I can bring out my fall decks now that we're into September. So looking forward to that, but also sad to set aside the Sistine Tarot because I've, I've been obsessed with it. I haven't wanted to work with any other deck since I started using it. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, July and August, not a whole lot to talk about. The deck I purchased was the Craft and Decadence Oracle. Not gonna flip through it. Um, it's gonna make an appearance coming up shortly, spoiler alert, uh, in another video. This has been on my wish list for a really long time. Um, I have wanted the Noisy Museum Tarot by La Green Witch as well. Um, time will tell if I order that or not, um, but this also has been amazing. I've been really enjoying this one. Definitely not an everydayer. Uh, she's a once in a while read. So that's what kind of came into my possession in the month of July. And that's kind of it for July, which is why we have no video. Moving on to August, um, my mom and I have been doing some decluttering in the house. Um, we've kind of reached a boiling point with, with stuff. So we went through um, some of our, I'm looking in my mirror to see if you can see it. You can't, I purposely put it there so you could, but we went through some bins in the basement that were like sentimental things and keepsake stuff and whatever. And I found my OG, Pound Puppy. He's a little, his nose is a little rubbed off uh, and he's got a stain on his back right here, which I did try half-assedly to get off. So I am going to try and remove that again. Did the, did the, did they have individual names? I can't remember. Made in Korea. Uh, I don't think so. So this was mine and my sister has the all chocolate one, which I also found, but this one was mine. So he's hanging out today. The other thing I found that was super cute that's behind me. So excuse my awkward reach. I remember making this. Faintly, not very vividly, but I definitely remember doing it. And I'm so glad we kept it and I'm so glad I found it. I am upset that we didn't put the year on it, but I would bet money this was kindergarten. My little dinosaur that I made in kindergarten, little baby, little baby Sarah made this. And the part that I remember, I do remember being very excited about doing this. I remember pinching the spikes is it called a stegosaurus? Why am I forgetting this? I do remember pinching it and I, I do remember getting help. So the eyes and like that, that is way too precise for a kindergartner. So I do remember having some help on it. My initials are on the bottom, which I definitely didn't write either, but I remember they put it in a kiln and I remember being so excited to get the final piece. So pretty cool to 
find stuff like this to keep stuff like this and now I'm going to keep it here with my tarot stuff. I don't know if you can see that low on the camera, but um, it's been a fun experience going through stuff and finding old treasures like that, old, well, vintage things now. So that's taken up a big part of my time in the month of August. The other thing I did in August that I was really looking forward to was a local pagan pride day. I'm not, I don't know what that means, so don't ask me to elaborate, but it was a tent of a bunch of vendors and that's what I was looking forward to. Um, and I went with a friend and uh, we were there for maybe 10, 10 minutes before the clouds rolled in. And in this clip, you should be able to hear the thunder over the talking. Uh, and then the downpour happened. So we didn't make it very far into our pagan pride day <laughs> event that I was so looking forward to. But we did go around to some other shops um, to replace our activity. So that was really fun. Um, hopefully, I'll attend next year. Hopefully they'll have it again next year. So hopefully next year will be better and it won't get rained out. They actually shut down early because of the weather. So womp womp. But it was an experience. It was fun. It was a fun day. Regardless, it ended up being a super fun day. So glad that happened. Um, the other thing that happened in August was I did readings for friends and these were rather impromptu readings. It's not like I packed a deck to take somewhere. One was in person and two were over the phone. The two over the phone were actually for men who they asked me to do it. So that was pretty cool. Um, and they were pretty accurate. I mean, I'm I on the fly tarot readings for friends. I tend to not go with intuitive hits, but instead go with the card meanings, the the number meaning and the suit meaning, because I get so like nervous and overwhelmed, and I keep thinking I'm gonna mess up or I'm gonna say something that's not accurate that doesn't resonate or whatever. So my in person tarot readings aren't top-notch okay that's I would never charge anyone for a reading for that reason because that's that's not that's not what I do um, but the in-person one um, was just on my lunch at work and I used the everyday witch mini that stays in my purse for emergency tarot readings which I've not really had until that day so it was a career one and um, it, it it was great it was I think pretty spot on. She did end up asking kind of a predictive question, which I was really nervous about answering because I don't do predictive readings. It's more self-care, self-discovery kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if that predictive reading comes true. No idea if it will. I mean, we'll see. Um, but that one, it, it felt very natural. And then the over the phone readings with the men were just, uh, one was relationship based and the other guy just had a bunch of random questions. Like he was just playing around. Um, and I think some of his were accurate. The other, the relationship guys were pretty accurate as well. So it was just fun. It was just an interesting couple of readings that happened. I don't typically read for other people. So and I think I should do that more. I think that that would be a way for me to get out of not using those intuitive hits and instead just relying on my knowledge of tarot. Um, so I think I need to do that more. I should, I should do that more. Um, so that's basically it. I can talk now about the decks that I want to use for the next couple of months. Um, I do have a couple here we can talk about just briefly, but this time of year for me, I have a plethora of decks that I use September, October, November, maybe early December, but probably not. Probably more just September, October, November. So my new rule about these decks and wanting to only use one or two for each month is going to be a little tough for the next couple of months. So the ones I'm trying to focus on right now... Um, is this one hadn't been used by me all year up to this point so I'm glad that I am able to go through it right now and get some use out of it it's the cat tarot well, I'll show you the box because that doesn't help you but it's a low scarabeo cat tarot one word these are the backs 
sorry that I'm looking off to the side. I'm just making sure that I'm in frame. I've lost my usual setup. I did some reconfiguring around my filming location and it was not for the better. So this deck, I just think aesthetically it goes with the fall season. Color wise, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. These are gonna fall. I do love this deck. I think it's hilarious. It's obviously, if you haven't picked up on it, it's cats in like movie or TV or superstar people. So I was a little bit concerned, even though I do love this deck and I don't want to get rid of it, I was a little bit concerned about it not having a place in my shelf, in my space, because I haven't used it up to this point but I do feel called to use it right now at this time of year. Do I have a thing for cats? Do I love cats? Would I call myself a cat person? No, I don't hate them. I've had them, I've had a cat before. Her name was Katrina. Uh, she was a calico. It's just, you know, I don't, I, I'm not a ride or die cat person. So that's the cat tarot and it has got some use over the last couple of days. We're just early into September. So just the last couple of days, she's got some use and it was actually decent. It was usually these kind of decks, these pop culture-y type decks don't really give me that much of a great reading, but it was all right. Another one I've busted out for this time of year, which does not get a lot of use out of me a lot of use from me, that's better, is the Trianfi Della Luna Illustrated Pips edition. I have used this, I think I used it one time this year. So earlier in the year, I think it was like May. Um, this is, again, the color palette, the more muted tones is September, October to me. And not only the, the fact that the the beings in this deck are a little more on the, I almost want to say cost, they're not like demonic by any means, but they're just a little more odd and not odd in the Lilith for Tarot way, odd in <laughs> a little creepy, a little creepy. So I have used this one a couple times and by a couple, I mean once in the last couple of days. So I think as far as tarot decks go, I'm gonna focus on this, the first one, this one, and the next one I'm about to show you for the month of September. Now the next deck is new for me this year and also has not been used, but I did know that this would be the time of year for me to use it. And that is the Lord of the Rings tarot. This was an Etsy purchase. So it is an independently published deck. I had my eye on it for a very long time, but shipping to Canada was 50 some odd dollars, five zero some odd dollars. So uh, no. And then when I went to the States recently, I had it shipped there. So these are the backs. pretty elvish looking. Um, so we'll just go through a couple of these. This is probably one of the best pop culture decks I've ever seen. It is very well done. Oh. One of the things about these pop culture decks, I mean, I love it and I don't at the same time, is that when I see an image and it's from the movie, like that picture of Gandalf with the moth, it immediately brings me back to that moment of the movie. And I think it, it, it does kind of pull me out of the reading a little bit. However, also what it does is give you a, a feeling for that card. I think that's only helpful if you're learning, if you're just new. I think pop culture decks are probably great. I don't know who that is. Okay, let's start skipping some of these. Um, I think pop culture decks are great for learners because if it's a show that you know so well, then it does help you um, learn the meanings of the card and learn what kind of emotions are supposed to be felt for a certain card. Oh my God, I am no man. 
so good. Um, but if I was reading for another person, oof, I don't know. I don't know. And Lord of the Rings is a bit different because I know it so well. I know it like the back of my hand. I can literally, I can look at a card. Here we go. And I know the exact scene it's referencing. I know what is happening in that scene. I know why it's happening. So I think it just kind of pulls you out of it a little bit. But that being said, I love my pop culture decks. I love having them and using them. And this, if you can't tell from the color palette, I do think that this, the Beacons of Gondor, I do think that this color palette is good for this time of year. I mean, even just the backs themselves, kind of a no-brainer. And Lord of the Rings is like a, it's a fall comfort movie for me. Same with Harry Potter, a fall comfort movie series to watch. Oh, this is Galadriel giving Gimli a strand of her hair, which they didn't really elaborate on in the movies, but it's an incredible gesture on Galadriel's part and speaks volumes. I'm look. oh, I was just gonna say, I'm looking for the lovers. This is an excellent take on the lovers card. Legolas and Gimli. So these are the two tarot decks I've been using over the last couple of days. Now we are early into September, so I haven't really picked out um, an oracle. I do probably think for these two, um, the Green Witch Oracle would probably work okay aesthetically. I'm struggling with my oracles lately. I'm having a bit of an oracle struggle lately. So that's a thing. I just... Aesthetically, I'm struggling with them fitting in with decks. I briefly tried to do a reading with the Ritual Tarot and the Magic of You Oracle. I thought, it's time. It's time to bust these two out. And the reading I got with the two of them did not mesh. And I was not feeling it. And I thought, okay, nope, it's just telling me it's just not time yet. Um, magic of You with these two decks, I don't know. Again, the whole pop culture thing, I don't know if the vibe would go. So I think the Green Witch Oracle would be a good vibe, an okay vibe for pop culture decks. I'm, I'm mentally trying to go through my list of oracles and I'm struggling because I'm on the fly. Ooh, the Memento Mori. Hold the line. Shall we do a pairing? That means I have to switch to a top-down view. All right, arm twisted. Okay, so we've got our Lord of the Rings and Memento Mori. So the one thing with the Memento Mori is that I do have to go to the guidebook. I mean, you can kind of work with globe, but I want more. I want more info. So two of cups with globe. Three of wands with grave. Okay, let's give these a shuffle because these we've seen these ones. So we're going to shuffle these quickly, sort of. gonna have to do I do feel like the color palette goes okay six of coins with lock that is a card that we saw the devil with cup hmm five of cups with cure okay the tower and lilies King of Swords with Dog. Ten of Swords with Scale. With the brain being on the scale. Yeah, it could make that work. Nine of Coins with Memento Mori. Ace of Swords with Viewing Table. Page of Swords with Key. 
Queen of Swords with offerings. Lovers with Cat. I think, I don't know, I think so. The Hermit with Bear. Again, I'm, I'm not familiar with Lenormand enough to know the Lenormand meanings, and I'm not familiar enough with the Memento Mori to know the regular card meanings. So I do think that the Memento Mori should be an oracle that I bust out, especially to just, just even to learn it, to get myself more familiar with it. I have used the Lenormand cards, the Fool and Anchor. I've used the Lenormand cards a couple times in my attempted Lenormand learning journey, but very minimally. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to try it. I think I'm going to try, let's leave this one out. I'm going to try the Memento Mori and I'm going to try to work with it and try to get more familiar with it. Let's just see, while we're here, when in Rome, the star, that one was already up, right? With perfume, so again, I don't know, I wouldn't know what to think about perfume. Is there a book? Yeah, there is a book. Let's just look it up. A fond memory, sweetness, a comforting presence, attracting a mate, demure. Oh my God. <laughs> Hilarious for what's going on in the TikTok world right, right now. I, I think it's starting to lose steam, but kind of funny. Um, okay. King of Wands with glove. Two of coins with the sun. Aesthetically, I think yes. But again, the message is if you are a Memento Mori fan, this is probably making more sense to you as to whether or not they go message wise, reading wise. For me, it is something that I'm going to have to work on. It is something I'm going to have to try for myself and figure out. I mean, there is a lot of cards in this deck. I don't have any expansion packs for it, um, thank God, because I feel like that would be too much for me to, to read about and to learn. Okay, I, th I, I do think I'm still gonna try and give these guys a go. And then I don't think the cat tarot is gonna go, so I don't even know if I should try it. I personally am probably not going to do that. And I'm gonna try and figure this out. We're gonna try and, and learn you. I like the tarot deck, that the, the name I could have said to you before I started filming but the second I start filming I lose it antique anatomy um it's kind of been one that I've thought about I kind of want to get it on sale just because I am so on the fence about it so paying regular price for it if I were to get it on sale it kind of makes it seem a little more easier to say yes to but I don't have it anyway okay that settles it this is the oracle we're gonna try and it does seem like I have some studying and some reading about it in my future. It's still, it's, I haven't used it so much, it's still like kind of stiff. All right, cool beans. Thanks for watching everyone. That's my July and August story time.